And with that, I will turn it over to Amy Tipler. Hey everyone, um, my name is Amy Tipler. I'm one of the library program administrators here for the Bureau of Library Development. Um, and today we're gonna be talking about senior programming. Um, and just as Rebecca said, feel free to turn on your webcams if you want, or come over the mic if you wanna say something or have a question, um, feel free to put it in the chat. I'll be reading the chat aloud also, um, if you don't have access to that right now. Um, but really, this is about anything for seniors, senior programming, library services for seniors. Um, we had a few people who submitted things uh, ahead of time, um, but if you have any questions, feel free to come over the mic or drop them in the chat. I thought I could just get us started with one of the ones that's in um, that was submitted early, um, which was how what, how can we um, do outreach to senior citizens on a limited budget? Does anybody have any suggestions for that? Alan said book bins. I know some suggestions um, they've had here in Leon County were to go to um, retirement homes and do book clubs there or ask as uh, some retirement homes have buses uh, with dedicated drivers so they could drive seniors to the libraries um, to do book clubs there for at a designated time, usually earlier in the day. Um, that's pretty easy for them. Book club kits also um, are a really good um, thing that for senior uh, senior homes to check out also. Chris said VR tours with Oculus, not the cheapest though. And and then also pen pals with teen volunteers. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's a great one. Sarah said our outreach to retirement homes is pretty simple and it's just the cost of printing out some handouts um, for everyone to read together. Ruth said field trips, cart drop-offs, large print book and picture books. Yeah, those are all great. Does anyone have any senior programs that they're doing right now that they're really excited about? Hi, can you hear me? Hey, yeah, hi. Um, my name is Noelia Martinez and I'm from the Lee County Library System. And currently um, we have, um, it's, a, it's called Community Conversations where we visit um, assisted living facilities. And uh, one of our staff members um, talks to them about different topics. Um, it could be money, um uh, your first car pets and it's all about you know um thinking about the past and bringing that joy sharing we share poems and music and stories and pictures and we bring picture books so it's a way to have one hour when we interact and we're not it's not an entertainment purpose it's a conversation and engagement purpose so uh, we keep our groups very small like between eight and 12 people would be the ideal. Um, and it's, it's the residents really like it. My staff members have really had a, a good experience providing it. And uh, it's a very, uh, I believe it's a very successful program. And the other thing that we do, um, recently we started just coordinating uh, library card sign up days where we go there at a preset time and we spend two hours just helping um, the residents sign up for library cards, but also they bring their laptops and their, uh, you know, um, iPads and stuff like that. And we help them get our library apps on their devices. And that makes them so happy. Um, that's the best part of the job, right? Seeing their faces and making, uh, making them happy. But, but yeah, it's, it's been a good experience. Oh, those are all fantastic. Yeah, that's great. It reminds me of, um, there's this um, thing called bifocal productions where they create memory kits basically, or, and I can put it in the chat, um, the, the Milwaukee County Public Library does these um, 
where they do all different types. They're older kits and I don't know that you can get them, but you can recreate them from things in your area, like, you know, 1960s theme kit where they have bandanas and other things from the 60s that seniors can remember and reminisce and talk about in their conversation starters um, that way. So it's more of like a visual um, prompt for them. Um, so you can't, you can recreate them with your own local things, um, which is really cool. Does anyone else have any cool things? Um, Sarah said in the chat, I'm in Palm Beach County. We do power hours on Zoom for our visually impaired members. We listen to a short story and then discuss it after. Our members really love this activity. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, bifocal. I, I don't think they're around anymore, but you could always recreate those kind of kits, which is pretty cool. And fairly cheap, depending on what you get. Maybe secondhand stores even for some things. Does anyone else have any cool um, senior programming they're doing right now or looking to do? No, oh, thanks, Katrina. Yeah, Katrina shared Citrus. I don't know if anyone here is from Citrus, but um, they're doing compassionate care kits, um, which is also really helpful for that senior population. Um, lots of cool things out there you can do that are more passive too, like not necessarily have to do active programming all the time. Well, I, sorry, it's me again, <laughs> but um, it just, I, I'm creating, um, I work with a lot of migrant camps and obviously that's all ages, but I thought about my seniors that I visit as well. So I created a breakout session based on food, on cooking, and um, it, ha it integrates what we like about working as a team and, you know, working together. Um, and it's a story, you know, it, um, they're hosting their family and they lost their ingredients and they need to take them, right? So I integrated the, the senses. So they, they hear, they touch, they uh, smell and to find out the clues to make it so that no matter their abilities, um, everybody can participate. So I think that will be a creative way that is not that is not um, too expensive and we can just reuse things that we already do in the library, but at their locations. Very nice. Yeah, that's a great way to pivot like that. Those uh, gotta reuse things like that. That's cool. Uh, Tina, Palm Beach County Library does a memory care cafe. Uh, we just started this program. Tina, I don't know if you're able to come over the mic, but what exactly does that entail? What do you do during the cafe time? And I don't know, she might be typing, um, but I know at Leon County, they have like coffee and cards at one of their locations, which is just coffee and letting the seniors play cards, um, which is easy, but it's been very popular too. So, and Vicky said, as I find myself in the senior category, <laughs> it strikes me that there are very different types of senior groups with different interests and needs. Conversation often focuses on those in institutions who are not mobile, but the active, engaged seniors are another good audience. That's a very good point, Vicky. Yeah. Now, Tina said they have tea time, craft, a game, and socializing. That's great. So another question that came in was about um, someone said, submitted, uh, we used to have a part-time social worker through a grant. That position was not funded. We often tell patrons to call 211 for help processing claims. Uh, does anyone have any other suggestions for resources um, for things like that? Vicki said Department of Elder Affairs and Shine. Yeah, very true. Judy said Area Agency on Aging. Yep. 
And sometimes those will come out to the library and they'll they'll send out um, a consultant or someone to come and talk, um, do a talk at the library too. So it can connect seniors that are, you know, if they come for a program that can be the program, they'll talk about different um, pro like services in your area. And Sharon says, we visit a facility to make library cards, check out books and place holds, yeah. Yeah, Judy said they have them come and talk about services. Yeah, it's great. So does anyone else have any questions for the group or anything they want to share? Um, we've still got a few more submitted questions, but I just want to make sure people that, that have come, um, they have a chance to talk or ask questions. This is a time for you guys to kind of share resources or other things. So feel free to uh, share whatever you'd like. Oh, thanks, Lindsay. Yeah, oh. national. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hi. So Hi. Um, I'm with Noelia. Um, I'm from Lee County Library System. And another thing that we've been doing is trying to make connections with the 55 plus communities because we have a lot surrounding us. Um, and they usually have very active activities directors and centers. And it's like just a great place to do outreach and share our services. So we do that a bit too. Um, and that was kind of going off of what Vicki said earlier, like the more active seniors. Um, that's been one way that we can tap into those is just shoot for those 55 plus communities and, and dive in with like their activities directors or managers. Yeah, that's great, yeah. So do they ever come to you guys or do you always go to them or how does that work? Well, we, our department is mobile outreach and Noelia is our community engagement librarian. So we usually go to them. So that's typically what we're doing. Very cool. Yeah, that's nice. And I saw Lindsay in the chat mention, um, National Council on Aging, and I was just reading an article um, that the Denver Public Library a few years ago, they did a, a 10 week course um, through some uh, resources that the National Council on Aging used for aging mastery, which is reaching out to seniors and creating programs on like senior health and relationships and finances. And so they, they've built, if you go to their website, um, which Lindsay put in the chat, so thank you. Um, they do offer like some courses and some other information on like outreach opportunities um, that you can do with seniors, which is really cool. And Dennis in the chat said, a lot of the programs held during the mornings trend towards a more senior event in Marion County. Our branch Reddick has had success with a local historian hosting monthly talks about area history. Bellevue has a dedicated Mahjong group. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I've heard from a few people um, that local history is really big um, lately with, with well, with many age groups, but um, with seniors in particular, um, and the library is a great place to host them. And that's an easy, easy uh, thing, lower cost thing to do also too. Vicki said, some of the senior living communities here have bus service to the library because people don't drive. Maybe contact local facilities and speak to the program director to let them know you would welcome that. Yeah. Um, we got a question in about um, homebound populations. Um, I don't know if anyone here does any type of programming or outreach to homebound patrons. You know, that one can be tricky. Does anyone do the mailing service where they mail books out? Yeah, we promote books by mail um, at those 55 plus communities and then also whenever we visit assisted living facilities. But um, and and anytime we're doing outreach, actually, we are promoting books by mail, but we do have that here. Is that just how what are the logistics of that? Does that is it just the the outreach van going out and, and dropping them off or is there actually like postage you're mailing them out? 
Uh, at Lee County, it's actually postage and it's mailed out and returned. Oh, nice. It looks like a lot of people in the chat uh, do books by mail. Very nice. I was thinking another way, um, if you can't do books by mail, I know some libraries can't, um, is to maybe partner with local like, in-home senior care companies and, and maybe drop off or have caregivers come in and pick up books to take to their, you know, senior clients. Um, on the way to work, they just go into the library and pick them up for them. So just to kind of get that connection going. I know some people, you know, they allow them to be able to check out and pick up books for others. But to say that you do allow that for seniors and their caregivers might be a good uh, connection also if they can't do book by mail. And there's also um, talking books as well. Yeah. And those, those are mailed out as well. Um, and then Lisa Lett says, Polk County, Florida as a homebound service that is available to people who are unable to access the library collection due to temporary or long-term medical disability. Library materials are sent through the mail and zippered bags with reversible address labels for easy mail return. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we have such a large senior population here. Um, it's hard to reach everyone, but it's great when you have different opportunities like talking book library or delivery services or book by mail. Is anyone doing any um, senior programming based on the summer reading theme altogether now? Vicki in the chat said, I've worked for libraries that place a deposit collection in facilities, often the large print lease books that had been in the library for a while. They had several collections and would rotate through several facilities, leaving the books in a facility for three to four months before moving them. Oh, that's very smart. Ruth said, has anybody tried story time or language classes at facilities and senior centers? Does anyone have any experience with that? We've got a couple more questions. Oh, Lauren um, responded to summer programming, not that I know of, but I feel like the community conversations type program uh, would be a good fit for all together now. Yeah, that would be a great fit. Yeah. I know we had a recently had a webinar last week or the week before, maybe it was two weeks ago, about um, intergenerational programming um, and how seniors can teach younger generations their skills and, um, you know, maybe it's drum making or some historical facts about the area. Um, so I feel like that'd be a really great thing to, to take on. I don't know. Jane had a question about, does anyone take library card signups over the phone? We normally require Florida driver's license or state ID. And Katrina did drop in the chat. Um, Stories are in communities, the intergenerational programming webinar we did last week in case anyone's interested in watching it. Um, and, um, and then Maureen said um, at Florida Braille and Talking Book Library, they do include all ages in their summer reading programs, as do many of the sub-regionals. A large percentage of patrons are seniors. So that's great, yeah. For the um, library card sign up over the phone, um, I feel like that would not only be helpful for 
seniors, but also like visually impaired people or, or people that can't necessarily ride or type very well. Um, but I could see how that would be hard if you're requiring a, a driver's license to, unless you're assisting them in signing up online. Um, Judy said they do e-cards, yeah. Oh, and I said we mailed them the info for the card after. Yep. Oh, Alan says summer program for open mic night, uh, open mic poetry and coffee. And it's attracted seniors in the past. Yeah, very cool. Does anyone do anything for um, caregiver support? Um, we had a question about um, resources for care or resources for caregiver support services. Um, I know I read an article recently about a library that does it for like parents. Um, they'll go to different housing um, authorities and work with them to do um, caregiver and parent support type classes. Does anyone do that? at their libraries for seniors. Um, one thing that comes to mind is Leon County a number of years ago did one through the Alzheimer's Project where they had them come in and teach courses um, for caregivers about burnout and other resources that they could utilize um, and other signs and symptoms of things, which was really helpful. Um, does anyone have anything that they do with local organizations that they partner on for caregivers? I feel like oftentimes we think about seniors and pin them as being patrons, but um, sometimes the caregivers aren't um, as recognized. Um, but Carolyn said we've had an, had Empath and Pinellas do a series of programs, including caregivers. Very nice. What did they, um, Carolyn, what did they talk about in their series? Was it mainly focused on taking care of the seniors or were there things for caregivers themselves? So the caregiver program was about caregivers and taking care of themselves. Oh yeah, that's very nice. That's a nice spin on that. Um, Amy said we partnered with Elder Options for an eight week or so called Savvy Caregivers. Nice. Does anyone do any programming for seniors that are more focused towards um, like the, the hearing impaired or sight impaired? And Ruth asked what's elder options. Um, I don't know if that's a local thing to Amy, but Sarah said I've attended the Fearless Caregiver Conference. This provides excellent information for caregivers. And Brenda said, we're starting a monthly movie day through our Talking Books Library at my branch in Brevard. Wow, oh, that's really cool, yeah.
Hi, um, this is Sarah. Um, hey. I've I'm in the same system as Brandon and Noelia, and I've worked on the community conversations program. I kind of just had a question that, that I wanted to bounce out about leading discussions. Um, if anybody had any tips, um, the location that I've been leading a discussion group for, um, there's one lady who likes to participate but seems to have trouble understanding what's going on sometimes. We've had staff who are able to assist, but I just wanted to see if anybody had any su suggestions for how to keep the discussion running smoothly and keep everybody involved and just kind of try to keep people engaged if they're having more trouble understanding the topic or, yeah, I just wanted to see if anybody had any suggestions. Is it something where you could have like a PowerPoint slide with the topics on them or write them out or do you already do that or? We usually have written handouts, but maybe pictures would help. Or more, more physical um, options might help maybe. Yeah, that is actually a good idea because she seems to enjoy looking at um, display objects. So maybe I'll try bringing more of those. Yeah, you never know what's going to help someone. <laughs> well, there's a few things in the chat. Um, uh, Dennis said there's been several libraries in Marion that have hosted Alzheimer's Association programs in the past, Alzheimer and dementia caregiver groups, challenging to get attendees. Um, Jason said we offer audio talking books for visually impaired. Sarah said I host bingo on Zoom for our visually impaired members. I mail them a braille or large print card with chips. Wow, that's that's interesting. Um, where do you get the the braille cards from do you have like a machine to make them or is it like a kit you buy and jane said great idea to mailing them relatives of disabled seniors often call us asking if they can get a card to read ebooks on their kindles uh, amy said elder options is known as mid florida area agency on aging 16 county planning service area North Central Florida, and she listed out the counties. Um, Helen said, we used to have a fiber arts program that would make fidgety bobs, which are a mixture of yarn and buttons and mixed fibers. These have been previously donated to memory care homes. Oh, that's super cool. I was a technology trainer. I recommend as many mediums as possible. Um, Chris said, one of those big art flip easel pads with large flower miners scribbled as needed, Sarah. Uh, I think that might be helpful. Yep. Um, Oh, and Sarah said she purchased them on Amazon. Really cool. I like the fidgety bobs mainly. I like the word, but that's, that's just fun to say. Um, and then I said the community conversations uh, need to have some questions prepared to help steer the event of straying off topic or to stimulate in a lull. Some library staff are better than others. Wow. Well, I do agree with the, the flip easel pads are nice too. Um, I know sometimes if people are running over when they're talking, um, sometimes they'll have like red, yellow, and green cards to kind of help get keep people on track if there's someone dominating the conversation. Um, and that can be really helpful for people with uh, like as visual aids. Um, I feel like the fiber arts program would be really interesting and could be a low cost program if you've got some extra things lying around. Uh, it might even be good for like a teen outreach program to create for donating to memory care homes, which is really cool.
Oh, tacky pillowcases. That's a nice one. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone do like knitting and crocheting classes? Um, you know, sewing and knitting and crocheting are kind of coming back in the style and having maybe seniors teach younger patrons or just a class in general might be a good idea. Oh, Lisa said Goodwill stores often have yarn and knitting needles and other craft supplies. And Lindsay has a macrame program. Uh, so we used to make pillowcases and donate them to the children's hospital. Oh, nice. Yeah. I know there's some that do um, like the mat and bag making with plastic bags. They'll recycle them and have, um, there's a group of retired ladies here in our town that does them and we'll send them out to um, the people who are unhoused in our area. Dennis said some Marian libraries have knit crochet groups that meet later in the day that can attract multi-generational audiences yeah there's lots of cool things you can do with knitting and crocheting and it's a lower cost program <laughs> which is always nice trying to look for those has anyone had any programming that it surprised you um that seniors were attracted to, or maybe something that they've asked for. I know when I, I worked at a library, they asked for ukulele classes a lot, and we we never got around to it when I was there. But um, does anyone have anything that the seniors are just raving about or always asking for? Gardening. Yep. Yeah. Our Jazz by the Books program has been a huge success. Lindsay, what is that? What's that like? That sounds really cool. Brenda said we have a ukulele group that meets here in Brevard and teaches during meetings. Nice. Do they bring their own ukuleles or do they are they donated? Do you have a collection? or a library of things maybe that you check them out from? Yes, they bring their own, but they share with newcomers. Oh, okay. Susan said, Manatee County Public Library has ukulele classes at several branches and are very popular with seniors. They bring their own instruments. Thanks. Alan says we check out ukuleles. Nice. We had someone who was so into the idea. She's like, "I'll oh, donate ukuleles if you just start the class." <laughs> um, she was very, very excited about it. But Carolyn says the Ukulele Society here. Oh, we have a society. Wow. Here it does programs. We have ukuleles to check out, but some people bring their own. Lindsay said, we are partnered with our local jazz society for their jazz um, on the books program. They have a collection within our library. Twice a month, we have afternoon programs with water and snacks. Nice. Uh, Charlene said, pre-COVID, I did a series of Make Your Cat a House program with cardboard boxes that was popular with everyone. Uh, there were a few senior ladies that came wearing cat t-shirts. I'm looking to bring it back soon. That's that's awesome. Yeah. There are books you can buy on um, cat cardboard house making for your library collections if you're interested. And those are fairly cheap too. Um, just some cardboard boxes and glue and things. Yeah, I'm with you, Vicky. I would totally attend a cat house making workshop.
Has anyone ever partnered for senior programming with like um, therapy dogs? I know they do therapy dog story times for children at like schools and, and some libraries, but does anyone do them for seniors um, or kind of connect in that way with, with maybe more unique organizations in town in your library system? Dennis said, I had a program years ago with Dulcimer Group. She was a former teacher that brought some for all to try. Dulcimer.net to see if a club is nearby. Oh, nice. Is there anything that you wish um, you could have for your library that you don't have for seniors? Um, you know, I wish that sometimes, um, I, I used to work for an in-home senior care company and I wish that we had been more active with like libraries and local organizations like that um, for, for caregivers that go to the homes. But it's great when you have like books by mail and things like that too, where you can just go directly to the patrons themselves. I wish I could find the article. I need to find the article again, but there's this article about um, music memory where they had music that um, they'd go into like senior homes or for other senior areas that um, they would play music from like maybe get uh, their favorite song from their child or caregiver or whoever and they would play that song and it would bring back memories It jog their memory and be able to kind of get them to brighten up a bit. Um, doing memory, music memory programs um, are really great. I know some hospitals will do those um, too, which is really cool. Oh, Charlene said, I would love a senior only browsing time. Oh yeah. Does anyone else have any questions for the group or anything they wanted to share? Oh, Lauren asked a question. Does so anyone have a sensory garden, especially one designed for seniors at their library system or any programming for seniors, older adults focusing on nature, gardening, or the environment? Would love to hear more about it if so. Vicki said at Niceville, they have a passive puzzle club where donated shared jigsaw puzzles are made available during a four hour period weekly. It's not senior specific, but many of the participants are in that age group. It's just a take one, leave one kind of thing, but there is conversation and shared interest among people looking through puzzles. It works much better than I had expected. Yeah. Um, Chris said, oh, and then to Lauren's question, reach out to your county extension office. I wonder if maybe working with like Alzheimer's Project or Elder Care Services also might be helpful for at least knowing what to put into a sensory garden specifically designed for seniors. They might have some, or they might have some um, some resources that you could use.
And Ellen said, if you don't have access or resources, genealogy is big for seniors. Yep, yep. Family search, yeah. Um, old timey trivia night, yeah. Yeah, I know for genealogy, not to, I mean, I live in Leon County, so that's probably why I'm always talking about it, but um, Leon County, they'll do, they'll have a local uh, genealogy um, professor come in and she'll uh, talk about genealogy and how to research and things like that. It's always well attended. Our, our um, genealogical society here in town also will, just on their own, will um, rent out well, not rent out, but we'll reserve a space sometimes at the main public library downtown. And they'll, we'll help, they used to help um, advertise for it and they, they would always get huge crowds too. And then Carolyn said, we've had a local Audubon Society do talks about birds and birding. Uh, we have birding backpacks to check out, not specifically for seniors, but a lot of seniors attend and check out the backpacks. Yeah, very cool. And oh, Chris uh, shared StoryCorps. They're also really great. They'll go around um, recording different people's stories from your area. Has anyone ever had a program where it's, you know, panelists of people, community members that have been there a long time in their area who just either talk about the history of the area or maybe talk about their time living there or maybe what they maybe they're a doctor that's been practicing for 60 years in the area and comes and shares their story has anyone had anything like that where the seniors are the people giving the presentations rather than coming to the program because that's another way to get them engaged as well I suppose Alan said years ago at a previous library, we had a group of seniors who would do public table readings of plays. Oh, that's cool. Um, Chris said digitization events, providing flash drives and access to scanners. Yeah. I don't know how popular it is now, but like, you know, VHS to DVD or something similar. Um, I don't know if anyone has anything like that at their library to check out or use. Um, as Carolyn said several years ago, we had a panel program with local veterans from different military branches to talk about their experiences. And Dennis said the Reddick History Program usually has a great deal of participation discussion. Chris said the human library, not necessarily an option for everyone. Very cool if doable. Yeah, that is a really cool option. <laughs> if you don't know what the human library is, um, it's very interesting. You should, you should check out the link um, Chris shared. It's where you check out a library, or a human for like an hour or so. You just kind of have a conversation with them, um, back and forth, learn about them. So be very interesting way to meet new people. I know not necessarily something that's um, just thinking back at the the VR option, um, you know, in Dunedin, I don't know if anyone hears from there, but um, they have one for the Kellogg Mansion where you can walk through it um, VR as if it's still, you know, in its full glory and learn the history about the, a local structure, um, which is really cool. Um, you know, and Alan said clarifying on Chris digitization is, was scanning of old photos and such. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people would appreciate that, especially if it was like a free service too. Oh yeah, Carolyn said, I'm at Dunedin. Kellogg has been popular. Yeah. <laughs> 
especially for those who can't necessarily drive to places or get places, but if they can get to the library or you can go to their their retirement home or wherever they are, that might be a great alternative um, for them to learn about local history and feel like they're experiencing something physically, even if it's just VR. Well, we're getting to the last 10 minutes of the of the discussion. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants to talk about or is curious about um, or anything they want to share? I love uh, seeing all of the past programming you've done and things you're planning on doing or the people you connect with. It's really, really great what everyone you know throughout the state does for their patrons. Um, it's fantastic. We connect with them in so many different ways. Um, Jason said, a VR tour is something that I want to incorporate in our library system for all ages, not a game, but a tour of our library. Yeah. Um, Chris said, Legos and Duplos. Yeah. I know I still play with Legos, but the kits, kits are cool. I'm sure some uh, adults would appreciate having like a a program about being able to do kid stuff, kid stuff like Legos. Uh, Lauren said, interesting program idea could be a tour, a uh, visit to another location, destination, maybe sharing landmarks, history, and or food from that place from within the library. Yeah. Oh, Vicki says, I think Walton County does Legos in a local bar. Hmm, that's nice. I would like to see what they build after they're at the bar for a while. Uh, in the past, I've done crafting and storytelling with seniors in a local nursing home. Nice. Jason says we're building a Lego wall at one of our libraries. Ooh, that's cool. Oh, and Alan said, which one? <laughs> which one, Jason? Where are you building that? What is it of? Yeah, I would love to see a picture too of the Lego wall, Bellevue. Is it just random that people put together or is it library themed or the name of your library and Legos? It will be in our steam room as an interactive wall to build on. Oh, cool. That is very cool. Backlit with LEDs, nice. Nice, that's awesome. I just bought my son a bright light. I feel like that would be a cool adult program um, too, but with bright lights. Lauren says that would go well with SRP all together now theme too. Yeah, it would. Definitely get some pretty cool continuous art going on on a giant Lego wall. And Chris shared Lightzilla. Oh, yeah, I see the wall. That's cool. Um, Lisa said music and memory.org has information about benefits of music for older adults. Very nice. Yeah. I feel like music is also one of those all together now themes too, or it could be done at any time really, but, um, and it is definitely great for memory and conversation starters and things like that. So 
So if anyone has anything else to share, I just wanna give you guys a few more minutes. I know we're winding down on the last 10 minutes or so. If you wanna share anything or ask any questions. Um, I am gonna take this moment to plug uh, SILI, the Sunshine State Library Leadership Institute. Um, the applications are now open for it if you're interested in applying. Um, I think they're open until June 2nd. Um, so we're we're accepting applications, and I can drop the link in the chat for you um, if you're interested. Um, but it's a really great opportunity for leadership skills. You do a project or project as a part of being a part of the program. Um, you have a mentor that goes with it through you. So if you are interested, um, you can always ask me for questions. Um, but also, I put the link in the chat in case you're interested in that. And then um, we'll also be calling for mentors. If anyone's interested in being a mentor, that's also, you can find information for that through the page, but the, the form isn't available yet. Um, just wanted to put it out there um, in case you're interested. And next month, um, oh, Dennis says, many years ago, there's a group art project in Marion County branches with plastic lids, each collected colors and then assembled the project. Yeah, nice. Love seeing the recycled sustainable programs. Feel like we've created an uh, almost an inexhaustive list of programs that everyone can use <laughs> at their library. Well, I want to thank everyone for coming. Um, and uh, next month we'll have our our discussion. Um, we don't have it approved yet, um, but the discussion will be on May 15th at this time at 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, so if you are interested, um, we will be sharing out more about it as well as upcoming webinars that we're having through our newsletter. Um, if you haven't signed up for that, that's a really great resource. Um, and Rebecca also put in the chat our survey. If you can fill out the survey about today's call, It'd be greatly appreciated. We use them in like our grant final reporting um, and to see if we're doing things right, if we're doing things wrong, if you have suggestions for us, if you wanna say anything or suggest anything, just, just feel free um, to drop it in the survey. Um, we also of course share things through our social media as well. Um, so that's always really, really fun. I can put it in the in the chat also how to sign up for those things or find us on social media too. Um, so there's a lot of great things out there where we share information, but I just want to share it just in case you don't already have those. You're not signed up for any of those. Um, but yeah, I'll hang out here, but um, I hope you guys have a great day and thanks for joining. I feel like I've learned a lot and we really appreciate everything you guys do. So thanks. Have a great day.